You're listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Greetings, young Squire Sprouts. Today is the 22nd day in the fourth month in the year of our Lord, 2023. My name is Sir Roland Pitterlot, and you're listening to Saturdays with Sir Roland on Catholic Sprouts, where every Saturday we discuss the art of dragon slaying. Happy Easter to all of you. After a couple weeks off to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and receive more training, it is great to be back with you. In all the excitement of Easter, I perhaps saying my alleluia is a little too loud because I seem to lost my voice. But I sure missed all of you, and I've been rejuvenated and feel ready now to complete our training together on the Seven Deadly Dragons. Since it's been a while since last we met, let's do a little review. Thus far, we've trained to slay five of the Seven Deadly Dragons. We talked about the Red Dragon of Pride named Kenodox, who tries to convince you that life is all about you and your wants. Humility is the sword to slay Kenodox. We talked about the orange dragon of envy named Envidia, who tries to convince you that life is a competition against everyone else. Admiration is the ballista to slay Envidia. We talked about the yellow dragon named Acadia, who tries to convince you that life is about finding the path of least resistance. Zeal is the spear to slay Acadia. We talked about the green dragon of greed named Argios, who tries to convince you that life is about gaining the most stuff. Generosity is the trebuchet to slay Argeus. And we talked about the blue dragon of wrath named Chara, who tries to convince you that life is about gaining the most power over others. Forgiveness and patience are the daggers to slay Chara. Today we begin our four weeks of training against the indigo dragon. As always, let's begin by taking a look at everything that is good and true and beautiful about the color indigo. Indigo is not a color that we talk about much. It's sort of a mysterious color that can seem to change colors depending on how you look at it. If you see an object that looks blue one minute and purple the next, it's probably indigo. Indigo has many qualities that represent what is good and true and beautiful. First off, it is a beautiful and attractive color. It is a color that represents truth and honesty, and it is incredibly loyal and sincere. Indigo relishes tradition and likes routine. It represents kindness and wisdom. This color is selfless and will always keep your best interest at heart. It will defend your honor and boldly stand up for what is right and just. And so it is a symbol of human rights and will encourage you to seek the respect you deserve. Indigo reminds us that we are made in the image of God and deserve nothing less than the best. Indigo is also a color of royalty and calls us to serve the orphans and widows and give food to the hungry. This color has a shade of purple, which makes us think of Lent and Advent, a time of preparation and fasting. Many times we just skip this color on the visible light spectrum, or we try to combine indigo with the last color, violet, and just call them both purple. As we will see, the indigo dragon and the violet dragon use a similar method of attack, but they are in fact two distinct dragons, just as indigo and violet are two distinct colors. There are seven colors on the visible light spectrum, not six. Later in your training, I will tell you why this is important and what makes seven so holy. If you remember earlier in our training, evil is not just the absence of something good. Evil is the corruption of something good. When everything that is good and true and beautiful about the color indigo is corrupted into something evil, false, and ugly, you get the indigo dragon. The indigo dragon makes you especially susceptible to temptations. Because indigo is such a beautiful color, it can be hard to resist its urges. The indigo dragon encourages you to ask this question, how can I find the most pleasure? Now, there's nothing wrong with pleasure, but if you make it your end goal, you no longer follow the wisdom of the color indigo, which teaches us that we deserve only what is best for ourselves, because we are made in the image and likeness of God. When under this dragon's influence, we seek pleasure only, even if it causes us harm. Specifically, the deadly sin that the indigo dragon tempts us to is gluttony. Gluttony is the inordinate desire for food. Now, food is a good thing. In fact, without it, our bodies can't survive. God made eating food pleasurable so that we would be encouraged to naturally nourish our bodies. The body has a divine design. You are truly miraculous in how your whole body works together to keep you alive and strong and healthy. It is truly amazing. The body is a wonderful servant to give us what we need. The body can tell you when you're hot or cold or sick or hurt or tired or thirsty or hungry. 
When we listen to the body's needs, we are more healthy and happy. But while the body makes a wonderful servant, it makes a terrible master. And the Indigo Dragon's game plan is to take what is good and corrupt it, like all dragons try to do. If you listen to the voice of the Indigo Dragon, you will no longer just obey your body's request for necessary needs. You will begin to allow your body to whine for unnecessary wants. No longer will your body be your servant. It will become a tyrant master, and you won't be able to say no to any temptation for food or drink. You will worship pleasure and immediate gratification, and quickly discover that the indigo dragon is leading you astray and tempting you to make unhealthy choices. Under the influence of the indigo dragon, you can never get enough food to satisfy you because you are no longer eating to give your body necessary needs. You are eating to try to silence your body's whiny wants. I'm going to call this dragon gula, which is a Latin word used by St. Thomas Aquinas, which means to swallow. This dragon literally bites off more than it can chew, so we must beware that we don't fall for its lies. To help you slay this dragon, I will now give you the battle cry for the indigo dragon. The indigo dragon changes color like moods. It is greedy like green, but this time for foods. It has a mysterious mixture of purple and blue and a dangerous appetite that can't be subdued. Temperance and fasting can keep it at bay, like Therese of Lisieux in her little way. Small sacrifices are great acts of love that can conquer this dragon that can't get enough. The wristband of right judgment can help you decide choices that keep you healthy, wealthy, and wise. My challenge for you this week is to study this battle cry and pull out the four secret ingredients to slay the dragon. Number one, the color and sin of the dragon. Number two, the legendary slayer to train us. Number three, the weapon or virtue to slay the dragon. And number four, the piece of armor to protect ourselves from the dragon. Today, we talked about the color and sin of the dragon. Next week, we will hear a letter from the legendary slayer whose method of dragon slaying is famous. Her little way yields big results against this dragon with a huge appetite. And until next week, I'll leave you under the protection of St. Michael the Great Archangel, St. Joseph the Terror of Dragons, and Mary, Queen of the Angels, Our Lady of Grace, and the woman whose seed crushed the head of the dragon. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hey, parents and kids. Our resource of the week for the Dragon Sayers Training Guild is a free download of the Battle Cry for the Indigo Dragon. If you aren't yet a member of the Training Guild, please go to extraordinarymission.com slash dragonslayers and register for free. And remember... Listen to Catholic Sprouts every day, including Saturdays with Sir Roland. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit Spokestreet.com.